Hi everyone, welcome to the July Garden Tour. This month has been the perfect weather for gardening. The days have been in the 80s, the nights have been in the 60s. You really couldn't ask for better gardening weather. But a heat wave's on the way. Shade cloth's going up tomorrow because it's supposed to be triple digits for the next several days. But I'm very happy with how the garden is filling in. I've really been working on getting a lot more vertical gardening space in my garden this year. So we did put these ladder trellises in last summer. We've got some beautiful scarlet runner beans just starting to crest the top of the trellis and hopefully they'll grow all the way over to the other side. I did plant some more scarlet runner bean seeds here at the bottom just to give me a better chance of everything meeting in the middle. If you've never grown scarlet runner beans, you really do need to do it. They're a super tasty bean. The pollinators absolutely love the flowers. Look at these beautiful red flowers on the scarlet runner beans. Don't have any beans on here yet, but it is a very ornamental and an absolutely delicious bean. Another thing I've been trying to do is plant for the pollinators. We've got the Black Eyed Susan here. These are from my Bring on the Pollinators Warm Season Flowers, and there have been so many bees in my garden this year. So that's always a good thing for the vegetables as well. Now I did plant some lettuce right down here in this little garden bed that Camera Guy made for me. If you've been watching my This Week in the Garden videos, you've kind of seen some of the projects I've been working on in the garden. So I've been loving the tree branches. These are, this is just a little cute little fence made out of tree branches and a nice thick little trellis. And surprisingly enough, the lettuce is doing very well in the 80, 85-ish degree weather. We have seen a little bunny hopping around our garden. It's been nibbling on the lettuce. So I did have to plant some more. Maybe we'll see it tonight on our garden tour, who knows? But um, this is the bronze mignette from the lettuce seed collection. And it is a heat tolerant variety of lettuce. And look how well it's doing but I will be covering this and hopefully it'll last through the heat this week. Besides early in the morning, golden hour in the evening is one of my very favorite times in the garden. It's about seven o'clock in the evening right now and it's so much fun just to come out in the garden, enjoy the cool evening air. The sunflowers, as you can see here, are growing in along the fence, cresting the top. I love the bright colors and it looks especially beautiful when the sun sets. If you've been keeping an eye on my Instagram, I posted a lovely picture last night of the sunset here in the garden and the sunflowers just absolutely scream summer. These are getting so, so tall. This one here has got to be, I'm thinking about 15 feet tall. And these are all from my sunflower seed collection. Sunflowers are one of my favorite flowers and I planted them all along the fence here. And you would not believe how many bees have been just buzzing around the sunflowers during the day. So if you're not seeing enough bees in your garden or your vegetables aren't being pollinated, plant lots and lots of flowers. Sunflowers are great for the pollinators, as are the Black Eyed Susans, and I'll show you some more flowers along the way. Well, here on the second ladder mesh trellis, uh, we have got some watermelon growing. These are a small compact variety of watermelon called Mini Love. It's an All-America Selections variety. And if you think you don't have space to grow watermelon, grow it on a trellis. This is just a little um, knee-high pantyhose that's supporting this watermelon so that it, can, it won't fall off the trellis. And this ladder mesh, is found, you can find it at your local hardware store. You have to look in the contractor's department. A lot of people have said they're having a hard time finding it. Ask at the contractor's desk for ladder mesh. Super easy, inexpensive trellis, and a great way to add more space to your garden. Now I'm just starting to get tomatoes on my plants. I've got the Golden Jubilee, the Mar Globe tomato here from my tomato seed collection. Typically the best time for harvesting tomatoes for me has been in September. Here in Southern California, we get warm weather well into the fall, usually in November. So we are dealing with a lot more shade in the garden beds this year. And I got my tomatoes in just a little bit late because I still had tons of cool weather vegetables in the garden beds probably until about May. So you can see here, the Marglobe tomatoes are just starting to come on. This plant is actually getting pretty loaded down here. So not ripe yet, but hopefully within the next month or so, we'll be picking some ripe tomatoes. And as you go up the plant, you can see a lot of little baby tomatoes just starting to come on. Now, one thing you definitely wanna do with your tomatoes is give your tomato cages a little shake to help hand pollinate the, the tomato flowers. Uh, I don't see any yellow flowers on here at the moment, but tomato flowers, oh no, here's a 
Now that's a watermelon flower. Um, tomato flowers have both male and female parts. So if you move them around, it moves the pollen around and helps you grow more tomatoes. So I've been coming out to the garden doing that a couple of times a day and I've definitely seen a difference. One thing I've really been enjoying in the garden this year is the wooden trellises. This is an eight foot tall wooden tower and I've got growing here some purple tomatillos. My very first time growing purple tomatillos and also a green tomatillo growing right next to it. This thing is growing like a weed. There's tons of flowers on it and I don't have any little tomatillos developing just yet. So I'm really hoping to get a good batch of tomatillos. I'm actually been checking it every day very anxiously awaiting and I keep seeing little teeny tiny well that's actually a flower I keep looking for them they're not showing up yet so I'm really hoping that the tomatillos come in fast because I love salsa verde camera guy he's going to be grilling these on the barbecue and we're going to be making lots of fresh tasty salsa so let me know if you have any good recipes I would love to hear about it I get a lot of questions about what tomatoes I'm growing. A brand new variety to me this year is a chef's choice tomato. It's a green tomato. This particular variety is a green tomato. And super excited about this one. This plant is really getting loaded down, you guys. Look at those beautiful tomatoes. And I think it might be a little bit tricky to tell when this one is ripe, but a little clue here to tell when your tomatoes are ripe. If you squeeze them and they give a little, that means they're ripe. These are still super hard. So even though it's a green tomato, I'm definitely gonna be doing the squeeze test to tell when this is ripe. If you've ever grown this variety, let me know how it tastes and what you like to do with it. And also what varieties you're growing in your garden too. Now you can see how much vertical growing space these arches add to the garden. Here we have a large cherry tomato growing up one side, a couple cantaloupe plants growing up the other. They're eventually gonna meet in the middle. And if I didn't have this vertical growing space, I'd be staking them up or sprawling them all over the ground. So it really does add a lot of growing space to your garden and a lot of visual interest too. So go back and watch the video, six crops to plant in August, where I show exactly how I put these ladder mesh trellises in. And also speaking of six, six crops to grow in August, make sure you're growing those late summer vegetables. I just started a whole new wave of cucumbers and I'll show you those in just a minute. Now come on down here and let me show you some cucumbers that have really taken off this month. So before you show you the cucumber plants, I'm really loving growing cantaloupes this year. These are from my melon seed collection. Lots of little baby cantaloupes coming on. So this is gonna be a ton of fun to harvest some fresh, tasty, juicy cantaloupes. So I'm really excited to show this to you guys. If you watched on June's garden tour, I showed you how these cucumbers in here were really stunted and I was getting ready to pull them out. However, I'm testing out a brand new product by Vermisterra called Vitality and I watered these cucumbers with it. You guys, I cannot believe the growth. They have just taken off and look at, here's a little lemon cucumber coming on the vine here. That's probably gonna be ready to harvest within just a couple of days. So really excited about that. I think this is a, the market more cucumber. I'm really looking forward to growing a ton of cucumbers this year because I want to learn how to make pickles. So if you guys have any good pickle recipes, I could really use some. So make sure you put them in the comments below. So that product will be out next spring. So make sure you stay tuned for more info on that. Now over on this side of the garden, I've got a lot of flowers growing. One of my very favorite flowers and also a great pollinator flower is zinnias. These are the giant California zinnias from my Bring on the Pollinators of Warm Season Flower. Would you guys look at that beautiful color? So bright, so pretty. And did you guys know that if you prune the zinnias, they're gonna grow more blooms. So as they've been blooming, I've been cutting them off, bringing them in the house for cut flowers. We've really been enjoying it. And there's tons more blooms coming on here. And it's so much fun to come out in the mornings and see the bees just going crazy. I also have planted along here marigolds. These are called big duck marigolds. They have a huge, huge flower. They're not quite blooming yet, but these are also an All America Selections variety. Look at these plants, they're absolutely humongous. And marigolds are wonderful. They're super drought tolerant, very heat tolerant, and they also help keep the pests away. So, so I thought I would plant a nice little row right here in hopes that the pests stay away from my squash. Now I know a lot of you are sunflower lovers as well, so please let me know what varieties you're growing in your garden. This variety just bloomed today, and I believe this is called 
Velvet Queen. Isn't that a beautiful color? I just love how many different varieties there are of sunflowers. The colors are just so brilliant and beautiful. And the bees just absolutely love them too. This arch is one of my favorite additions to the garden this year. This is the Nocturne Arch by Gardeners, and it adds so much beautiful visual interest to the entrance of our hill garden here. We've got some cantaloupe growing up one side, lots of little baby cantaloupe coming on here, so that's a lot of fun. A sugar baby watermelon growing up the other side, and this humongous volunteer sunflower. Some of the sunflower heads are starting to die off. I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna leave them there actually for a few more days because the birds have really been enjoying the sunflower flowers and by planting some things for the birds I'm hoping to keep them away from my tomatoes and so far it's working but if you trim off the heads of the sunflowers you can dry them in the sun just let the seeds dry out in the sun and then it helps uh, bring a new life and new energy to the plant so it starts growing more flowers so it's been a lot of fun this one is a volunteer the stalk is so so thick and when it's done blooming, I'm gonna save the stalk and use it for a steak, for a tomato, or some other kind of climbing plant. In this garden bed right here, I have some squash growing. Now I'm not real happy with my squash crop this year. These are getting shaded out by this tall magnolia tree above us. So one of our jobs for this weekend is to trim this tree back and see if we can't get some more sun on this garden bed. But I am growing this squash vertically and it really does help save a ton of space. So what I did is I put in some tomato cages when I planted the squash and then as they grow, I'm just feeding them up through the tomato cage. And you can see this long stem is just winding its way up through the cage and we've got one of the yellow crookneck squashes right here. Now one thing you want to do with squash is the bottom leaves will get brown or yellow. Sometimes they might get some powdery mildew on them. So you definitely want to keep the bottom leaves trimmed off and it sends more energy into the squash plant and just gets those dead leaves off because you really don't need the dead yellowing leaves. So that's why my bottom, the bottom here of the plant is you see this long stem. So I really am hoping to get some more sun here so we get a lot more squash. Thank you guys so much for wandering around the garden with me tonight. It's just such a beautiful evening in the garden and I appreciate you coming along with me. Well, right here, we've got some peppers. One of my favorite peppers is the California Wonder. And this plant too is getting just a little bit shaded out, but we do have a beautiful California wonder pepper plant or wonder pepper that's ready to harvest. I'm not going to pick it tonight. I'll probably come out in the morning and do a harvest. Isn't that a beautiful pepper? California wonder is a gorgeous thick walled pepper and absolutely delicious on the grill. And you might've seen my Instagram post about that this week as well. Next to it is the yellow, I think this is a yellow banana pepper, a sweet pepper if I recall. And these are absolutely beautiful. Um, peppers you can pick pretty much at any stage. You can see how there's different colors of peppers on this plant. Some orange ones down here that are ready to harvest, some yellow ones. And a lot of times the longer you leave them on, they change colors. So just experiment and see what color you like to harvest your peppers the best at, and then just kind of go from there. Next to it, I have a whole bunch of cucumbers growing. And this lemon cucumber, I've really been enjoying this year. We just did a little harvest this morning of these beautiful cucumbers. And the lemon cucumbers pretty much taste the same as like a Market Mora or a Space Master, but they look like a lemon. Aren't those pretty? So you can see there's lots of little lemon cucumbers coming on the plant. And also, I th think this is a Boston pickling, and these are all from my cucumber seed collection. Absolutely love fresh cucumbers. And the bees have been buzzing around this plant like crazy, so I'm hoping to have a really good crop this year. Oh, and you can see here, I've got a little a tree branch teepee type trellis here. And then the cucumber plant has been growing so much. It's kind of growing over and sharing the cage with the tomatoes here. So I've been kind of weaving the cucumbers up through the cage. Sometimes they, they need a little bit of tying up, but you can see here the little trellises, or um, not trellises, the tendrils are kind of grabbing right on. And if you come out and just kind of weave your leaves in between the cage, it'll really help them grab on and move up the trellis. And this tomato plant here is the large red cherry from the tomato seed collection. Got a lot of really nice ripe tomatoes, so we'll be harvesting those in the next couple of days. 
One thing you want to do, especially here in the later summer, is provide your tomatoes with lots of airflow. So keep it pruned. You see how there's not tons of extra branches in here? Keep the bottom foot or so of your tomato plants pruned. Prune off any yellowing branches or stems. Sometimes that's just the old branches. It doesn't necessarily mean it's disease, but it could be disease. So just prune those off and that way it doesn't spread up through the rest of your plant. So you always want to be coming out to your garden and checking it and just enjoying the time that you have and of course harvesting your delicious vegetables. We have been so enjoying the tomatoes, the peppers, and the squash on the grill. If you've been watching my channel for a little while, you know that I love growing in Smart Pots fabric containers. And this one we affectionately call the Smart Pots deck because it's full of Smart Pots. And first off here is the Strawberry Crate Tower. Smart Pots has a crate liner, which is perfect for lining plastic crates with and growing things in. Here I've got strawberries growing, lots of green strawberries coming on. So it's gonna be really fun to be harvesting these over the next couple of weeks. And the crate liners hold the soil in. Then I just cut holes in it and just pop the plants through the holes. And these are stacked three high, so you can fit a lot of strawberries in here and really make the most use out of your space. Now, strawberries do not like temperatures over 85 degrees. So I just kind of leave a piece of shade cloth hooked on the back here. It's just clipped on with a simple little clip. And then I just throw it over whenever the temperatures are going to be hot, which it is, is going to be tomorrow, and that way it shades the plants, protects them from the heat, and keeps the flowers from drying off and dropping off. So back here in the uh, Smart Pots deck, I planted my new fresh wave of cucumbers. If you've been watching my live streams, my videos, we've been talking about planting a late summer garden. So some of your spring crops might be starting to die off or get pests or diseases. So these I planted in here maybe, uh, maybe three weeks ago or so. That way I have a new fresh wave of vegetables into the late summer and into the fall to harvest. So you can grab my late summer garden seed collection, which I designed especially for that. It's got quick growing vegetables like cucumbers, beans, squash, some basil, and some of the little mini dwarf lily put zinnias. So these are gonna be climbing up over this trellis, climbing over the top, and it'll provide some really nice support for them. Now I know a lot of you are growing in the purple Calicum Smart Pots. We showed it in the bean video over the weekend. It's the perfect size for kids. Here I've got some of the scallop squash in it. These are also in my late summer garden seed collection. These I just popped seeds in maybe a month or so ago. So I'm still waiting for the squash. I have lots and lots of male flowers. And the male flowers are a flower with a stem with no squash at the end. I am patiently waiting for the female flowers, which are a flower with a little baby squash, and then either the bees will pollinate them or I'll come out and hand pollinate them. You can watch my video I posted a month or so ago on how to hand pollinate watermelon. The same applies to squash. So they're getting just a little bit crowded in here. A lot of you have asked how many uh, certain kinds of vegetables to plant in each type of smart pots. So here I probably have maybe 10 little baby squash, which is way too many. So I am gonna be thinning out probably the middle section here, but I did wanna plant a lot of seeds just to make sure I had a really good germination rate. And I think they all came up. So let me know what types of squash you're growing here in the late summer and also how you like to eat squash as well. One thing that's really nice about the Smart Pots fabric containers is that the fabric, not only is it super durable, but it's breathable. So the plant gets a lot more oxygen, which means it develops a really nice root system. So you can grow larger containers in a smaller space. So this is a 20 gallon container and I've got a apple tomato, which is a really nice variety. The tomatoes are shaped like an apple. They're yellow and it's also an All-America Selections winner. Don't have any tomatoes on it yet, but I am anxiously awaiting those. So got some flowers, might have some tomatoes really soon. But for a cage for this, for a support, I just used two tomato cages. One is stuck in the ground, the other one I inverted, uh, connected it with cable ties, just kind of folded the tongs in at the top for safety to allow a little bit more space as well. And it's a perfect, quick, simple, easy, support for my tomato cage. Now, also one great thing that's that's uh, wonderful about Smart Pots is you can move them in and out of the sun and the shade. So this area gets shaded over on this side in the morning. So what I typically do is I just grab the handle and I pull it over to this side of the deck in the morning. 
so it gets lots of morning sun. And then I move it back in the afternoon where it gets the afternoon sun over there, over here, and that way I can get a full six to eight hours of sun for these plants. So definitely make adjustments based on the sun that your garden has and just make it work for you. Now remember the scarlet runner beans I showed you at the very beginning of the garden tour? This is a whole wall of scarlet runner beans. I'm actually growing them on a cattle panel arch. So if you're looking for, again, a quick growing bean, also provides you with some privacy. It's beautiful, it brings in the pollinators and you can also eat it. You definitely wanna grow the scarlet runner beans. Just make sure you have a good amount of space for them. So they're beautiful, tasty, bring in the pollinators as well. You really can't go wrong with them. And these are in my bean seed collection. I know a lot of you have been following along with the progress of the melon pot. Now here we have some cantaloupe and watermelon growing in a 20 gallon smart pots. And we did a couple of videos on hand pollinating and taking care of it. And they're really doing quite well. Uh, we, we, we put some watermelon supports in maybe a month or so ago. And these cantaloupe are growing absolutely beautifully. So we'll definitely do a harvest video as they are ready. You know that cantaloupe are ready when they pull very, very easily. The stem pulls away from the fruit. So this is not quite ready, but it should be ready probably within, I want to say about three to four weeks. So definitely subscribe. Hit the bell icon too, so you get notified of whenever we post a video, because you definitely don't want to miss it. Uh, I do have some watermelon growing in here too. Let's see here. Oh, I think these are both cantaloupe. Here's the little sugar baby watermelon, and I'm definitely going to need to put my pantyhose supports over this one very soon because it's getting bigger and bigger by the day. Oh my goodness, look at this one back here. This one is really looking good. So you can definitely grow melon even in a small space in a container and grow it vertically. The center planter we call the fountain planter and it's probably the only spot in my garden that gets full sun all day. So I've got a lot of peppers planted in here. I absolutely love growing peppers, and I want you guys to come along and see one that I'm particularly excited about. First of all, before I show you that, I think I told you on the June Garden Tour, where I planted a whole bunch of red perfusion and white perfusion zinnias. And I said this month, I was hoping that they would bloom. I just absolutely love these flowers. They're a dwarf type of zinnia. They have a real small kind of bushy shape to them. These are also an All America Selections winner. And the great thing about these flowers are they really, really hold up to the heat. They're fairly drought tolerant and the colors do not fade even in the bright sun. So if you're looking for a super, super hardy flower, these are the ones for you. I absolutely love growing these and they will always have a place in my garden because of the bright red color. My favorite color is red in case you hadn't seen that by now and so it really makes a beautiful color splash so over here on the side i'm growing some new varieties of peppers this year and this one i'm really excited about it's called the esco mio pepper it's an all america selections variety and i love growing all america selections fruits and vegetables because they are always very prolific and productive in the garden would you look at this pepper this is humongous Look at how big that is, and it's just starting to turn. It's a sweet pepper. It's yellow, and you can see the beautiful variation of the colors here. It's yellow when it's ripe, so you can see it's not quite ripe yet, but we probably will be picking this within the next few days. You can see the beautiful orange color on the back as well. So peppers can really change color throughout the summer. You just kind of find what color you like the best and then pick them then. Now here's some okra. And I mentioned before, okra is not my favorite vegetable in the world, but it is an absolutely gorgeous plant, very tropical looking. And there are some flower buds starting to form here, which means that okra is not far away. Now, if you grow okra, you really do need to pick it once the okra comes on. Uh, come out and check it every day. Okra grows super, super fast. If it gets too long, it's just stringy and tough and not very good for eating. So I'm looking forward to trying it this year and hopefully I'll get to harvest it when it's nice and small. Got a couple other varieties of peppers growing in here. It's, isn't it fun, you guys, when you see the baby peppers starting to form? So here is a California Wonder. Little teeny tiny babies coming out. A lot of you asked what these little tropical looking type flowers are. These are Dianthus. I actually put these down, seeds planted seeds in here over the winter time. 
They're a cool weather flower, but I found they're also pretty heat tolerant as long as they're growing in the shade of some other vegetables. So not blooming yet, but hopefully they will be soon. More California Wonders. And a couple other varieties back in here. I think these are the yellow sweet bananas. So the peppers love this spot here because it gets lots of sun. And here we have a watermelon growing. This is, um, I want to say maybe the Charleston variety from my melon seed collection. So I think it's just not getting enough sun here. The, the leaves look nice and healthy, but it probably just needs a sunnier spot to really take off. One of my favorite garden vegetables, although it's really hard to pick a favorite, is eggplant. And here I'm growing the Ikebon eggplant. And we've been harvesting off of this plant for maybe a month or so. You guys have probably seen the pictures on Instagram. It's a long, skinny type eggplant, kind of finger-like. And I've actually got a couple on here that we'll probably harvest and grill up this weekend. So you can tell eggplant is ripe when it has a nice sheen to it. Look at that beautiful purple color. Oh my goodness, I just love the beautiful color pops of the garden, don't you guys? Now one thing about this plant, unfortunately it is getting some spider mite damage. Do you see the little spotted leaves here? So I'm really hoping I can save this plant from the spider mites. I've sprayed it with neem oil. You guys are definitely gonna to wanna to go back and watch. Oh, look at that, That's a. I think that's a cucumber beetle actually. We're gonna get rid of that little guy because uh, that is not good for the plants. But hopefully you guys have been watching the um, organic pest control video. Um, so you know how to spray your plants with neem, peppermint, and rosemary oil. And I do actually have a backup plant. So I'm really hoping I can save this plant, but if not, I've got a backup plant growing somewhere else that I will put in its place. So make sure you guys that you plant your backups just in case things happen in the garden because things do happen, right? So please let me know any challenges that you're having and how you're dealing with them in your garden. If you've been watching my This Week in the Garden videos, you'll know that I planted a couple tomato plants in smart pots here because a lot of my hill has been getting shaded out and this spot is in full sun all day. And these plants are doing amazing. They probably get eight to 10 hours of sun a day. They're growing so well in the smart pots. This is the apple tomato I was telling you about. And look, it's already getting loaded down with tomatoes. So I've also been shaking this cage every day to move the flower, the pollen and the flowers around. And it probably has four or five tomatoes on it. And oh, lots of flowers back in here too. And another thing I've been doing this year with the tomatoes is pinching out all of the suckers. Number one, just to control the size of the plant so it doesn't get out of control. And number two, pruning out the suckers really helps all the energy going in, go into the more productive parts of the plant. And in case you don't know what a sucker is, I've got a little teeny tiny one right here I can show you. The suckers are the small little tomato branches, tomato stems that grow in between the main branches of the tomato plant. If I let that grow, it will grow into a full on tomato branch and really take the energy away from the main productive branch, which is right up here with the flowers. So what you want to do is as your suckers grow, just pinch them out. And this is a tiny one, but you can also do that if the sucker is a lot bigger. Just pinch them out and then you can put them in the compost pile. This will help you grow a lot more tomatoes. Now let me just show you what a difference full sun can make. I have two of the very same tomato plants growing. This one in full sun, this is the Hersa Govac. And this tomato plant or these tomato seeds were given to me by Cliff. If you guys watch our live streams on Monday at noon Pacific time, Cliff's our moderator. He grows giant tomatoes and giant vegetables. He gave me these seeds and this is a giant tomato or it's supposed to grow giant tomatoes, but look at the size of this stem. This is just a beautiful tomato stem. It's nice and thick, starting to de develop flowers. And it is growing beautifully here in full sun. I will be adding another layer to this cage, similar to the cage I showed you earlier, because this plant will probably grow, grow eight to 10 feet tall. Now let me show you back over here, the same variety of tomato that is getting shaded out, planted at the exact same time, and what a difference in the growth. Same tomato guys, probably gets only six hours of sun a day. And let me see if I have any flowers on here. I think I do have a couple of flowers. Still a beautiful tomato plant, 
but just not as strong and as vigorous as the one growing in full sun. So just think about the placement of your garden and try and place your plants in the most sun possible. But if you don't have full sun, you just work with what you have and just make it work for the space that you've got. Now I have been trying out the brand new Smart Pots colors, which are gonna be available next spring. This is the Mandarin Orange Pot. I think it's so pretty. If you've been watching our Container Garden series, you've seen that same pot in the Container Garden series. I just popped a couple of zucchini seeds in here. Now is a great time to plant a fresh new batch of zucchini. Zucchini grows so fast within a couple of months, so if you've got two months left in your growing season, just pop some seeds in a container. And I wanted to get them in a more sunny spot, so I'm hoping that I still get a good crop of zucchini out of these. Nothing sprouting yet, but I'm hoping I get some little sprouts coming out within the next few days. I've been covering my grapes with a netting, you guys, to help protect it from the critters. And after digging in here, I just noticed, I'm so disappointed, look down here. Oh my goodness. Oh no. <laughs> Guys, it's been three or four years we've been trying to grow, grow grapes. Never had too much luck. No, Something's been in here because these were all tied up nicely just a couple of days ago. Look at this. Jerry, I don't know if you can get in here. Oh my goodness. One, two, three four. Oh my goodness, I'm just sick. There's one more under here. There's another one to your right, too. Oh my goodness. To my right? No, go straight through back where you were, sorry. Oh no. I was so looking forward to these. Look, it got, there was a nice little clump in here. It's like they opened the bag. There's wow. two bags left on the vine. And you know what? I had a, I had bags covering all of these, and look, they're just stripped. So maybe a possum, or what's the only thing I can think of—a raccoon? I don't know. Possums are climbers. Oh my goodness! If you guys have any ideas, let me know. I'm so disappointed. I was hoping to do a harvest video this weekend. Well, this winter, you know what we need to do? We keep saying it, but this winter we need to build a trellis. A cattle panel arch or something to get them up off the ground that'll really help too so i guess this is our grape harvest so much for our harvest video right <laughs> well i've really been been enjoying growing lots of different kinds of basil if you guys watch the live stream this week it was all about growing basil so go back and watch that but there's so many different kinds of basil you can grow it's such a beautiful lovely aromatic herb here is the purple basil from my herb seed collection purple ruffled basil isn't this beautiful you guys and I am still working on getting that herb garden planted, but some other uh, garden projects have just taken priority, but we will be doing a video on that, hopefully during the month of August. Now this is the Italian large leaf basil. This is just such a beautiful plant, and I've actually been growing these in partial sun, and they've been doing very, very well. So if you guys have been watching my This Week in the Garden video, you know I've been working on this red and yellow and splash of purple planter over here. Completely redone this whole area. Lots and lots of progress this month. I don't think anything was planted in the June garden tour. So we've got a beautiful sweet 100 tomato that's just getting loaded down with lots of little tomatoes. They come on in trusses and you can see right down here, this first truss at the bottom is getting ripe. So super exciting. And I just put up this Titan tomato cage from Gardener's Supply. They sent it to me to try out, really enjoying it. The um, supports here just snap on, and then you can move them up and down the plant if you need to, depending on which area you need to support. Some eggplant coming on here, Black Beauty eggplant. Kind of hard to see behind this basil pot, but some flowers. I love Black Beauty on the grill. We love to slice it and make eggplant lasagna. The eggplant is just starting to develop. And I also planted lots of different kinds of peppers. So again, the theme here was red, yellow, and purple. So I've got some purple peppers starting to come on here. Of course, they're still green, but they will be changing color. And this is a volunteer, I'm assuming it's a butternut squash. So super excited because I did not get my butternut squash planted, but this one came up on its own. The only thing is, I just need to figure out something for a trellis here. 
I don't have one yet up for my tomato plant and it's definitely gonna have to share this container. Now, a lot of you ask about these red containers and what these are, they used to be a galvanized steel pipe. Got it from a local farmer, cut them into different lengths, painted them red, put them in the garden bed here. And I think they just add a lot of visual interest and also just help keep the plants contained as well. Now come on in the planter here. I wanted to show you the progress of these cucumber plants. This is also part of my late summer garden. And these I just put in here maybe two or three weeks ago. They're growing on this tomato tower or this wooden tower actually. Um, these I started from seed. These are all from my cucumber seed collection and they are growing like crazy. Now this garden bed just gets partial sun and the cucumbers really do like some afternoon shade and look how beautifully they're growing. So I'll just be weaving these in this support and they'll be climbing up and just providing me with some cucumbers probably in about a month or so. So let me know if you're planting cucumbers, what variety you're growing and then grab a late summer garden seed collection and get your late summer garden started now. You're gonna be so glad that you did in about six weeks that you planted a new fresh wave of veggies. Just to give you a little bit of perspective of how the garden is laid out, right to my right here is where we did our container garden series. That's kind of the upper area of our deck that's connected to our house. So the whole container garden is right up there. Thanks so much for joining me for the July garden tour for this beautiful evening in the garden. I really appreciate you spending time with me. I look forward to hearing from you how your month of July was in the garden, what you're planting, what you're harvesting, and what your favorite time of day is in the garden. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.